I'm Polly. I'm a mom, a wife, a pelvic floor physical therapist, and founder of No Kegels University. I have helped thousands of women stop leaking, enjoy intimacy, and feel proud of their bodies, even after having kids. After years of listening to women wonder why no one talks about leaking, how they should properly recover after having a baby, and that pleasurable intimacy is possible, I started to get real frustrated because I believe that no mom or woman should struggle when there are answers. It became my mission to shed light on the lack of postpartum care and the lack of discussion on issues that relate to women and their health, even if they can be uncomfortable sometimes. It also became my mission to change the conversation on women's health, the pelvic floor, and more. Here we go. Episode 19, How to Spice It Up from Katie with Faithful Fling. A few weeks ago, I met this vibrant woman named Katie, and as she shared with me her business, I was blown away at how incredible, yet how relatable and needed that it is for marriages, especially if we're not into pornography and looking elsewhere where we're wanting to keep our marriages incredibly faithful. Let me first tell you about Katie, and then we can get into the interview. Katie resides in Kansas City, Missouri with her husband and four children who have all flown the coop. She's left with an empty house, but not an empty marriage. You can find her outside doing a lazy run, visiting local donut shops, taking naps, or with her nose in the book. Katie enjoys encouraging everyone to embrace their sexuality, improve their intimacy and connection with their spouse, and to learn to have fun in the bedroom. She loves to engage in conversations about bringing novelty, fantasies, and playfulness to the bedroom by role-playing. She's been married for 24 years, where she still dates at least every other week. Hi, Katie. Welcome to the podcast. Thank you so much for having me, Polly. Of course. Um, So when I met Katie, I think it was almost a month ago, and when she was telling me about her business and what it entailed, I knew that I needed to not only explore it for me and my husband, but I also felt that there was so much value in her business and in her membership that... um, I wanted to be able to share it because it's it's a topic that I feel strongly about, and it's also a topic that once a lot of my patients and coaching clients and, and many women, once you get past that painful intimacy, sometimes it's hard to figure out how to put that intimacy back together. So that's why Katie's here. So Katie, why don't why don't you tell, or at least tell me tell me tell everyone else a little bit more about faithful. F- Faithful Fling, and what uh, what made you decide to create it? We'll start there. Awesome. Thank you so much. Um, my husband and I, we decided that we wanted to create the thing that we wish existed. So what we decided to do is we used to explore together with the idea of role-playing together. So we would just create little scenarios and have role-play dates, just, just John and I together. And we really wished that there was like a safe, classy place that we could go to that would help us with like character development or um, location ideas and things like that, because we just had a fabulous time adding novelty and playfulness into our marriage that we decided that we wanted to create a website for other couples to experience the fun and newness of having a role play date together. So we named our business Faithful Fling because all of our role play dates will be between just you and your spouse, hence the faithful part. And then we wanted to add a fun and flirty board to our role play date nights. So we came up with Fling. So that is what we created and we love it. It, it, um, helps you by, we give you like all of your, um, character development, location ideas, spice it up section for someone that really wants a spicy night. We give you links and, um, costume ideas, dialogue suggestion. It's just like a fabulous place that you can go for an entire role play scenario to be displayed right there in front of you. And then you and your spouse have a fabulous time putting it together and having a great date night together. 
This is exactly why I think that this is such an incredible resource for women. And one of my most favorite things is what you said. It's it's between you and your spouse only. So, and just to, just to even add the word that I really liked that you said was classy. I, I have also seen that among my patients and coaching clients that they've had such a hard time that they want to expand what's happening between their husband and themselves, but they don't know where to go. Or when they do look like, um, I think maybe you said this in conversation that, you know, sometimes things are a little raunchy and it's at a level that they're not quite ready for. Absolutely. It, it can definitely give you some anxiety on where to go. I'd love to mention that our website, we don't use explicit images or language, but we do have that spice it up section that does offer some spicier um, suggestions that you could use to implement in your fling if you decided to. Um, and also with that being said, your spouse would have no idea that we even gave those suggestions to you because you only get to see your role of the fling and they only get, and your spouse only sees their role of the fling. So we leave, um, those two aspects are totally separate. Um, but the way I'm able to write it, they blend well together. But the reason we do that is because we want everybody to be able to have, um, the ability to add or take away any part of a fling that they don't love, including the sexy spice it up options. So there's no unmet expectations. So that is like a fabulous point that I would love to make is that um, we write it and tell everybody exactly what their spouse knows about the role and what they don't know. And um, you can choose to take what you want or, or not. And there's no unmet expectations. It's all fun, classy, and anything that you would um, like just want to do, but you've never really been able to know how to go about doing it. It's so fun. It almost sounds like a create your own adventure, but between you and your husband, like, um, I, I like the ability, like you said, to add and take away where again, so many people or so many couples, I should say, have different starting places. And so that yes. really lends you know, who, whomever, right? Husband and wife or husband or wife, the opportunity to decide what they're comfortable with. Absolutely. Um, I think that having great communication skills is going to be really, really an important factor in deciding if you even want a role play date together or anything else you want might want to spice up together in the bedroom is having communication skills to be able to discuss with each other if it's even something that you're interested in doing. And um, I love to mention that we offer a free 21 day trial because we believe that a husband and wife should be able to decide together if having a role play date together will be a mutually connecting and pleasurable experience at no cost to them. So that is something that we offer to every single person that signs up so that they can decide together if it is. Um, we we also love to give you tips and tricks and hints on how to, to get into character. So you can kind of like just anything you try new, if you practice it, you get better with time. But I did want to also mention to you something that we offer and our website is a name change option. So like names are super important. And like the, our first um, fling or role play scenario is called the test drive because we want you to be able to test out a role play date together and test out faithful fling. So we just decided to name it the test drive and it's a really fun and flirty way to go on a, a date together with your spouse just in a different persona. But we have a name and her name is Indy and maybe you don't love that name or maybe you want to be yourself and you can just change your name and it auto generates it throughout the fling description and it will just indicate whoever, um, whatever name change you decided to put in there, it just changes it throughout the description. So uh, that is one fun way that people get to decide, like maybe the first time they just want to play as themselves. And then maybe the, a few more flings are down the road, they decide, you know what, I'd love to try to be, um, Lydia for this fling or something like that. But that is a really great way to decide and ease into a role play date. It's just using your own name. I, I am blown away at all the considerations that you guys have implemented 
into how, like to all the logistics of this, because I, that's one, that's one thing that I have noticed with so many of my patients and coaching clients is that we, I, from my perspective, I have to change a lot of my advice. It's very dependent upon the, you know, the, the female that I'm working with the, and I, I'm just, I'm blown away at all the options and considerations that you guys have and, and how they impact intimacy and comfort. I I'm just, I'm blown away. This is, this is really incredible work. Thank you. I appreciate it. We put a lot of time and energy and effort in trying to build a product that is going to build connection for a marriage because we want, we want that. If I really think, Polly, that I have a great recipe for amazing sexual experiences with your spouse. And that is if you have like high levels of emotional intimacy. And what I mean by that is like great connection, friendship, communication, honesty and trust, commitment, freedom to be yourself, emotional safety, and so forth. And if you have that, and then you add in some novelty and playfulness, that right there is like a fabulous, fabulous recipe for some super hot sex. So just, just going to throw that out there. That is my personal experience that that is what, if you have that emotional connection and then you add in the playfulness and newness, that is really where it's at. I'm I'm glad you brought that up that you said it was your experience. So I, I'm curious when you when you and your husband created this together, would you mind sharing a little bit about the season of life you were in? Because I I I'm in a, a different stage of life than you are with with my I kids. Know. We've talked about that previously. I have littles, and yours are quite a bit older than mine are, and so life just looks different. And so I'm I'm just kind of curious. How like was it your season of life that led you? Or you you mentioned that a little bit. I'll I'll go ahead and let you. But I'm just kind of curious if, if your life season played a role into this at all. Thank you. Thanks so much for asking. Um, I the first time my husband and I decided to like explore the idea of role playing together, our children were ages one, three, and five, and. At that point in time in our marriage, it wasn't great, Polly. Um, I put everything that I was and every single thing I was into being a mother. And and my husband just got my leftovers 100%. Whatever was left over that time is what I gave him. And it would be very fair to say that the same way with my husband. I mean, he was really into his career and trying to figure out how to support a family that we were not really, we did not have high levels of emotional intimacy. Um it wasn't, it wasn't fabulous. Um, you know, I would have probably chosen to go to a movie with a friend rather than, than with him and probably the same way. And, um, we just had to work really hard to try to remember the people that we were when we got married and just not pigeon my you know, pigeonhole myself into just being a mother anymore. And not to say that role playing is certainly like what was the thing that changed everything around, but it wasn't. But when we did our first role play date, again, we were one, the ages of kids were ages one, three, and five, super young, busy all the time. Nobody slept through the night. Um, he made like a little comment like, hey, Katie, how come you never dress up for me anymore? Um, cause we had seen something on TV and she was just like a little bit into character and inside my head, I was like, are you kidding me? Like, <laughs> why don't you do this, this, and this? But, um, for once I was just kind of quiet and I got a little bit curious about the question and I thought about it and it, and I was like, why don't I dress up for him? Um, and I got more and more curious about it. And I thought, you know what? That actually sounds really fun to me. I'm going to give this a try. So I went ahead and I took my three kids with me and I went to Forever 21. It's just this little, you know, it's a store. They sell inexpensive clothing. And I found this one little like plaid skirt and I decided, you know what? I'm going to spend the $14 on it. I usually would have loved to have gone to Target and let three of my kids pick out a $5 toy. But this time I decided, you know what? I'm going to invest a little bit in me and John. And, and I did. I put the kids to bed one night when I knew he would be coming home late from soccer. Um, he played in a soccer league. So I put all the kids to bed and I put um, some serious time and energy into my appearance. I put my longer blonde hair into like lower slung um, ponytail. I went heavy handed with my makeup. 
I put on the shorter skirt with like these brown church boots that I typically wore that like went up to my knee. But if you like match that with like a sexy shorter skirt, like it totally changes the whole look of a boot. Um, I had fun with a, uh, an old t-shirt that I had. I kind of cut it up to make it a little bit sassy. And when I heard the garage door open, I actually opened the door and I was, I said, um, Professor Jones, I've been waiting on you. And his face was like, oh my goodness, what is going on? Like, who is this? Like, this is the best day ever. And his, like, I remember the look on his face and I thought, when was the last time I surprised him like this? Like, when has he looked at me like, wow, like what is happening? And to give him full credit, he, he said, like, just kind of seamlessly was like, I'm sorry, I kept you waiting. Like, like yeah. acted like he was like Professor Jones. So like, um, cool. it was really, really unique experience. And uh, with that being said, I would probably have a conversation. I would suggest having a conversation with your spouse prior to just like dressing up in a costume and going for it. There's, there are better ways of going about it. But what ended up happening to us is that I showed some time, energy, and effort into creating an experience that could be connecting and fun. And it was just a neat way for us to look at one another, not just as mother and father to these children that we shared, but like as fun people that a long time ago used to date. And now we were like learning to have a little bit of fun inside our own home when the kids were asleep, we didn't have to go out with it. Um, And we had a fun time. And what he would say if you asked him, is that it made him think of me for like days and weeks afterwards because it was like I surprised him again. Like he was like, oh my goodness, this is like this fun Katie girl that I married such a long time ago. Um, Is she back? Like, (laughs) (laughs) so it just, we would play around that for years. So even though we had super young children and we didn't get along that great, um, obviously we worked really hard together to get to a place where we had emotional intimacy and emotional connection again. And um, we had a great time going out on dates together. And occasionally we would have role play dates. And then we had such a, a fun time. We were like, you know what? I feel like other people should be able to try this. Like, I feel like they should. And we looked and there wasn't anything out there. And we sat on the idea for like about 10 years, Polly, just it wasn't the right stage in our life. Um, We had the idea we had, in fact, we almost had, we had a website about seven years ago that we were going to launch and, and we just didn't. And then until this last year of 2022, we were like, you know what, let's do it. Now is the time. And it's right. There really is a season for everything. And now is the time for us um, and me to, to launch this business. And I've been having a fabulous time with it. I love helping other couples reignite some passion in their lives that maybe that they thought was dormant or they were never going to get again. And I love the feedback that I get from couples. Um, Sometimes it's really quick and funny, like, oh my goodness, I had no idea my wife could be so silly because the fabulous thing about (laughs) um, role play dates with Faithful Fling is that we designate who is going to be the pursuer in some of them and who is going to be the pursuer. So you basically alternate, not that it's like every other one all the time, but we try to alternate it. And that can be a really unique dynamic poly for a marriage that maybe one person is always the one that's initiating. Yeah. And, and if it's the other way around, it almost gives you permission to like, oh, okay, well, I mean, the suggestion was given, I'm going to choose to take that suggestion. And um, we love to give all of our members suggestions that they have the ability to decide to take or leave. So um, that is that is that. But as far as stages in life, again, so we role played when the kids were super young. We role played together when they were like in middle school and high school and our kid, our house was like a revolving doors of, of um, kids coming in and out of the house. Like, I think that's what makes it so great when I write a role play scenario, I can think about having kids in the house young kids in the house, older kids in the house, or we are just experiencing empty nesters this the last few months. Um, and that was like, I just try to make it work for every stage in life as pertaining to children, as pertaining to age, um, all of the things. Um, like my husband, he was in a ski accident and he broke both of his heels. Like that was something to decide. He was in a wheelchair. I had a hysterectomy this past fall. Um, And it just makes me realize, like, 
you have to write these things or give people an option to pause a membership to come back to it because obviously I wasn't, um, I needed time to heal and recover to be able to. So that's why we allow you to pause a membership or if you cancel, you still have access to all the flings already in your account because people's lives change so rapidly. Things happen. You can, um, Maybe you're experiencing a move or a deployment or things like that. We really want the user experience to be fabulous. Yeah, I don't know how much more I can iterate. I feel like you guys have really, and and maybe just because it sounds like you guys have been through so much, like you talked about, you know, you weren't having a ton of time to devote to him early on, but then you, you've, you've really been able to, it sounds like, improve intimacy emotionally and physically through the different seasons. And then as you talked about, you had a surgery, he had an accident, that there's all these other components that, A, it's okay to, you know, take a break and, you know, and kind of pause, whether it's with the membership or, or just in, just in your in life. life. Yeah. Um, but also that it's possible amongst all of that, all those different seasons. Like you said, it made me think, oh, because I'm not in the teenage years yet with my kiddos, but it makes me wonder, oh, okay, like you don't have to put that on pause. Like I, I've i heard a lot of women suggest like, oh yeah, you know, when the kids are out of the house, then we can, then we can rekindle things or then we'll have more time together or that type of a thing. But it's, it's still possible. I, that, that's what really spoke to me. Thank you. I will say, though, with the empty nester, um, just because it's so fresh and, and raw in my mind, mm -hmm. don't wait. Don't wait just to put your marriage on hold or your, oh, I'll just get to that when they're gone. It happens so rapidly. Like you wouldn't. It really does. It happens so quick. But don't just wait until it's then because you're going to be left with an empty house, an empty feeling in a marriage. Not to say that you couldn't build it back up because you certainly can. I've definitely lived through that and put in the time, energy and work to build something in a marriage that has been rekindled and we built rebuilt friendship and falling in love and all of those things. But I would just strongly suggest um, doing it now. And then the other um, caveat is that is that your kids get to see it. Your kids get to see you date your um, spouse. They get to see that it's important for their relationship uh, to to emulate that when they get older and their dating career. So it's great. But it, it is kind of fun. Like my heart hurts as a mama, like that there's no one home and there's not shoes by the front door. Or I went to Costco <laughs> and I was like, well, I don't even need anything because it's just <laughs> me and my husband. Um but it is also really fun just being me and my husband. Like we have a, we've had a really fabulous two months so far. Like um, I'm grateful that we're choosing to make the best of it and uh, that we have like this. I'm just really grateful for a fun friendship and a really playful sex life that makes it even better. Yeah. It almost sounds like that you're, like you said, even though your mama heart hurts, which I can't, oh man, I could just become emotional thinking about my kiddos being gone. But it, you guys really, it's almost like you ramped up, like you prepared for this season of life because you put the time into your marriage and to the different levels of intimacy. We did. And the great thing is that we both did it. It wasn't like just me trying to do it. And he was like dragging along. We both, we were able to both do it and not to say that we did it right or everything is perfect either. Sure. No, none of that. I'm not trying to like paint this beautiful picture because we still get in arguments or we still disagree about how things should be done. Or um, sometimes like that's, he's the only human I see that whole day. So not to make it sound like it's just like perfect over here. Um, but that part in the work that you just mentioned has been done and we're able to, like recover from those moments quicker because we have that nice foundation. So I will say that. Absolutely. That, that is really beautiful. I'm glad you, I'm glad you outlined it that way. What, what would you say? Cause, cause in my head, there's always those that say, Oh, I, you know, I don't want anyone's input into my marriage or, or, or that type of thing. So may, to those that might be thinking, Oh, I don't need this, or maybe I wouldn't feel comfortable. 
I've, I'm sure you've had these conversations with uh, clients and customers. Would you mind sharing your experience, what you've observed and what you would say to those? Absolutely. Okay. You know, if I think that one of the great ways to go about is having really wonderful communication with your spouse to decide if it is something that you want to do. But a few misconceptions about role playing, whether it's with faithful fling or just by yourselves, there's no wrong way to do it, is that um, don't take yourself too seriously. Like, it's not like a real um, play or something that you're putting on. There is no audience. You're supposed to just be having like a playful fantasy type of date night with your best friend, your spouse. So don't worry about that. Like as with anything you practice, you get better. Um, and it doesn't have to be. Sometimes the other misconception is, is it awkward? Well, it is as awkward as you allow it to be, right? Like, I mean, my goodness, we've had role play scenarios, like a baby started crying and I'm like, oh gosh, it sounds like I need to, um, go take care of something. I'll be right back. And like, you just pause what you're doing, take care of whatever situation. If you have to run the babysitter home or anything like that, and then you just come right back to it. That can feel a little bit awkward at first, but you'll catch on real seamlessly. Like it, it is, it's fabulous. Um, and role playing, another misconception is that it's a lot of work just to create the right scenario. And, and you're right. It is a lot of work, but it's a wonderful way to show your spouse that they're worth your time, energy, and effort to have fun with them. And also use that prep work time as like mental foreplay and building anticipation because your brain truly is your largest sex organ. But as far as somebody questioning whether it's like, is it a mental affair or something like that? I think Dr. Jennifer Finlayson Fife said it best when she said, just because children play cops and robbers as you know, children and they're just pretending doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to grow up and be cops and robbers. Um, it's just a simple, playful time that you're having like a unique experience with your spouse. So for me and my husband, John, it does not mean that. We've learned that anything that goes on in the bedroom that is just between us and it is a mutually desired, like we both decide we want to do it. We don't feel bad, wrong, or ashamed. So um, we do also do not want to be the bedroom police for anyone either. We truly believe that people and couples should be able to decide together if this would be a connecting experience and a pleasurable experience to do together. Um, another thing that you could do is decide if, if you were trying to spice things up, whether it's role playing or anything else, um, using a toy, or you can ask yourself, will this experience be enjoyable for both of us? Will this be a connecting experience for both of us? Will this be pleasurable for both of us? Will adding playfulness and novelty enhance our relationship? Um, and then do we need to work on other parts of our intimacy, which would be like the communication, um, honesty, trust, emotional safety, things like that, before we feel comfortable adding in novelty and playfulness? So those are a couple of the things that, that you can ask yourself um, and your, your spouse. And another way, like, let's just use me, for example. I really love the idea of role playing and I want to present the idea to my husband, John. I would just go up to him and say, hey, John, I really love our sex life. And you know what sounds really exciting to me is role playing together with you. And then I would explain to him what that might look like. Like, I would love the idea of dressing up in one of my old costumes for you. Like the idea of dressing up is really intriguing and sexy for me. And then I would just explain to him what that would look like. How do you feel about that? And then allow them to get curious. So just having open communication, staying curious, deciding if it would be connecting experience together is a strong suggestion that I have for if anyone decides to use um, Faithful Fling or not. Those are really good questions to consider. And I would even go as far to say whether or not you're utilizing faithful fling or not or role play, but just, just those questions in general, just to look a little bit deeper into your marriage. I think those are really, really good questions, which almost makes me wonder. Um, so you, in your experience, and I, and I, I guess I'm just, relying on your expertise. I'm, I'm thinking about, um, patients that I've worked with in the last couple weeks 
And I have some patients that have, have made comments like, yeah, our marriage isn't really where it needs to be. Would you say that this would be something to improve their level of being connected and like a different level of intimacy? Or do you feel like there needs to be some work prior? Is it something that, you know, they can work on their emotional intimacy and the physical intimacy simultaneously? Do you mind just kind of sharing your opinion and thoughts on that? Yes, I can answer that question as my experience with John and I, and then I will do it again. (laughs) So for John and I, my experience was that we added the playfulness first. And then that was like a caveat to help us see each other in a new fun light and like helped us Mm. to be able to remember ourselves outside of me being a mother. And, you know, it helped me get out of like mommy mode and helped me feel in touch with my sexuality again. And it helped John get more excited about date night. And um, he liked encouraging me to embrace like my own sexuality as totally different than being somebody's mother or a certain position I was holding in church or anything like that. It like helped me break between those two separate roles. And then it through role playing, it helped me just blend together and recognize I can be both. I could be a fun, sexy, hot wife and a really fabulous, good mother at the same time. And that was okay. And then the other way to answer it is if your marriage isn't quite where you think it should be, I encourage you to build upon your emotional intimacy and then adding on some playfulness. So I've seen it work both ways and I don't really get to determine who, what would work for any couple. Um, But I just want to tell you, I've seen it work both ways. And it wasn't an answer to your question, but I don't think that there is a right generic answer and the couple can help decide that together. I, I think that is a great answer, no matter how I ask that (laughs) question, which I, I think maybe, I don't know, maybe I was hoping for an answer like that, or just again, like, or, or maybe it just kind of reaffirms my beliefs that a marriage is really between you and your spouse. And you just take what is going to work for you and you leave what's not going to work for you. Absolutely. And you know what? That could be um, lots of different aspects and it could be, it could be role playing. One spouse may love it and the other one might not. And you have to have two yeses to make it a go. And that, that is why we offer the 21 day free trial so that there's no cost to you to give it a try. Um, and another really fun way to go about adding some playfulness and novelty is creating a role play scenario between you and your spouse, not even using faithful fling, like just using your erotic minds to create a scenario together that you think would be really fun to do. Like that is fabulous. That, that is just a really great way to exercise your erotic mind as well. Oh, that is a really, that is a really good idea. I like that. I, I'm kind of, I'm going to have to go back and re-listen to this because I'm, I'm wanting to sit here and take notes on all the things that you're saying. This is really, really great information. Thank you. You are welcome. Okay. So would you mind maybe telling one of your most favorite client stories? I would be happy to tell you a great client story. I had a husband that emailed me it was just telling me thank you so much for this this has just brought a totally different element to our date nights we offer flings one time a month or once every other month so it's not you're not doing these all the time it's just every once in a while. and he said it's like one of their most favorite things that they're looking forward to is when they have the newest fling released to their account and he said what it allowed his wife to do was to like put her other roles behind and I can totally resonate with what she's doing and just really focusing on her time and energy on him because she, he said he, she usually didn't do that. 
And then I had another customer. <laughs> she was so funny. It was a really short one, but she said, um, we have a fling. It's called the Walmates. And she said, the Walmates was my most favorite sexual experience night of my entire life. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Like just things like that. Like, um, so we give fun, spicy suggestions that maybe you wouldn't just do on a regular Tuesday night um, or or a weekend for that matter. But we just try to bring in some fun, sexy elements that that will get you out of your routine. And that is why people love us so much is because it just breaks you out of your typical routine of going to the same restaurant and doing the same thing. And then it's like a fun and unique way to date your, your spouse. All right. Let me ask you one more question because one of my missions, especially with this podcast is to speak to women, speak to their health, which I strongly feel like that's what Beyond the V represents, or at least that's what I'm, I'm, I'm working to help change that where women see their health as a bigger priority. There's, there's a lot more to them than just birthing children and being mothers. So if you, if you could give these women that are listening the, the takeaway from this episode, or if you had a mission that you, that you wanted to relay to them, what would you say that that is? I want everyone to have an explorative, vibrant, fun, and passion-filled sex life. I want every woman to know that she is capable and deserves to experience pleasure. I want everyone to know that their bodies are good and it can be, your experiences can be shame-free. That is really beautiful. And I'm sure it's going to be impactful to many of those who listen to this. So thank you for that. And as always, remember, you're an heiress and a queen and everything in between. See you next time. If you're interested in learning more about Faithful Fling, check the link in the show notes and you'll be able to get a 21-day free trial to test your first role play. And be sure to follow her on Instagram at Faithful Fling, one word. If you enjoyed this episode or even wondered if I can help you, check the show notes for more details. And to see what else I'm up to, follow me on the socials at Beyond the V period by Polly. Because I'm changing the conversation on women's health, the pelvic floor, and more, I still need your help. Please subscribe, leave a review, and share with a friend or two. See you next week.